I bet that you didn't know you could leverage talent recruiters at a venture capital firm to find your next role at a high growth startup. Startups are always looking for the best talent in engineering, product, marketing, sales, design, whatever it may be. So today I will be discussing everything you should be thinking about and doing as you think about finding your next job at a high growth startup. Before we start, I just wanted to caveat that I might be showing specific examples of companies or VC firms as I show how I search through things or how I look at stats. But these aren't any endorsements whatsoever, rather they're just random examples that I found off of the internet to have something tangible to show. Okay, let's continue. You'll want to first understand how much risk you're willing to undertake. Startups are generally categorized by what stage they're in. So it usually goes from pre-seed to seed to series A, B, C, and so on, usually until E or F before some sort of exit. At each round, they raise money with a different valuation. Pre-seed financing is usually funded by the founders themselves. Maybe there's friends and family involved. With seed funding, this might be where an angel investor comes in who is generally a single or multiple investors who might give money and their mentorship or extend their network to the founder. And from there, each round of funding goes from series A, B, C, and so on. And at these rounds, the money is usually raised from venture capital firms. The ultimate goal is a successful exit because the investors want a return on investment. An exit usually looks like a company undertaking an IPO, basically their stock being public on the stock market, or it might look like being acquired. And it's usually at these exits where the people holding onto their stock can turn their shares into cash. It's quite common that startups don't have as much cash as bigger corporations, so they might compensate their team in company shares to make up for the lack of cash. And they might also do this because when the team has ownership of the company, the team has more incentive to work hard to contribute to the success of the company. So if the company wins, they win. Stock compensation might come in the form of employee stock options where you're allowed to buy a certain number of shares at a specific price. Or they might look like RSUs, which are restricted stock units. Basically, you're gifted a certain number of units over a specified set of time, usually after a period of time as well. So for example, you might be gifted X number of stock units after one year of working at the company with additional units vesting every quarter or every six months for the next four or five years. There are other stock compensation types that I haven't mentioned, but regardless, stock will be a large part of your compensation most likely. So you'll really want to make sure that you believe in the company that you're considering working for, that they have long-term potential to make money, and that you believe in the business model and you believe that they will continue generating revenue. And this is because as a private holder of the stock, you can't liquidate your shares until the company either goes public in an IPO or gets acquired or the company runs some sort of stock buyback program and all of these can take years. Even then, according to the Harvard Business Review, two thirds of startups never see a positive return. So even if the stock doesn't have any value, which is the majority of the case, you'll want to make sure that you're getting some sort of non-monetary value from working at the startup. So this is where you might ask, who will you be learning from? What do the backgrounds of your peers or your manager look like? And are those the paths that you yourself might be interested in taking in the future? So I think these are all pretty important questions to ask yourself before you take the jump. Now that you know what to expect, here's the tip that we've all been waiting for. Few people talk about reaching out to talent recruiters at venture capital firms. Here's why they'll most likely respond to you. These firms want their portfolio companies to succeed. If their portfolio companies are doing well, it's a higher chance for the investors to get a return on their money. So they provide networking, mentorship, and most importantly for us, guidance around recruiting and talent. If you take a look at it from this angle, they're really incentivized to help their portfolio companies hire the best talent out there. You won't find contacts on every firm's website, but for a lot of the top firms out there, if you go on the website, there's usually a team or our team tab. Once you go in there, you can do a control find for the word talent. And there's usually specific people at these VC firms where their roles might be talent partner, talent director, or maybe even talent in general. 
Sometimes the roles aren't listed, so you might see a list of names instead. In those cases, you can use one of my best friends, LinkedIn, and they have a functionality where you can search by the company and within the company, you can filter on a title. So in the title, you just type in talent. And from there, you can cross-reference the list that you find on LinkedIn with the list that you find on the VC firm's website. To send your first email, you'll want to make it very short and sweet. You can share your background in a sentence or two, make a very concise ask, and if they're interested, they'll respond to you and probably ask for a 15 to 30 minute phone call. In order to get a response, you'll want to make sure that your resume is in tip-top shape. If you don't get a response, it could be a matter of experience. So if you're quite new to the industry, it could be worth reaching back out in three to six months. In general, I personally have had a pretty high response rate. I think the key is to keep the message and the ask extremely concise because these are very busy people. And then if they want more information, they will ask for it. From the email, they'll probably ask for a 15 to 30 minute call and it's really important to go into this call prepared. They'll probably ask you why you're looking to switch roles, why you're interested in working at a startup and just general questions about what you might be looking for in your next role. So before the call, just make sure you have a good sense of what you're looking for in a startup and what types of projects that you might want to work on. Once they have a sense of what you want to work on, they'll probably send back a list of a few startups that are hiring for the role that you're seeking. I cross-reference all the startups that I'm interested in through a site called Crunchbase. The information they have for the free version, which I use, is pretty general. I try not to read too much into the stats because, for example, just because one company has had a lot of funding, it doesn't mean that they're doing much better than another company that hasn't taken as much investment. But Crunchbase can be a great benchmark for approximating how big the company is and figuring out, if you're lucky, what other investors have invested in this company. Generally, if all of the top VC firms are investing in one company, that means that many people who study startups for a living and have probably done their due diligence in looking at the financial statements think that this particular company has a lot of potential. I would recommend keeping an open mind as you think about what startups you want to join. There are a lot of interesting startups out there that are solving different problems in industries that we might not be familiar with. In the beginning, when I was looking at these startups, I would see startups in the SaaS, automotive, like loan refinancing industries. and. I would just think I'm not very interested in that. I would argue though that it's more important to look at the people that you'll be working with. What does their experience entail and what skills might they have based off of the background that you see? And I think instead of focusing on the industry, focus instead on who you'd be working with and what you might be able to learn from the people you're working with. The final tip I have is to make sure that your resume or your story shows some sort of entrepreneurial background. If you've been working only at a big corporation for years, then they will be wondering why you're interested in working at a startup. But if in college, for example, you took an entrepreneurship class or you started a company, you started a nonprofit or an Etsy shop, any sort of entrepreneurial side project, anything that shows that you take initiative and are interested in the startup world, I think will generate a lot of interest in your profile. So those are my tips for finding a job at a high growth startup. Also, I'm very curious to know if any of you have already tried the tips I mentioned and how well they worked for you. As always, please like and subscribe if this video was helpful. And that's it, I'll see you next time.